TGI Fridays, 3330 Veterans Boulevard in Metairie, the site for Sports NOLA TV this evening. Here at Fridays, it's always Friday, even on a Monday night. And a pleasant good evening to you. I'm Ken Trahan. So glad you could join us for the latest edition of Sports NOLA TV. And don't forget the telethon from the sea following our show here this evening. Well, it's been another great sports week in the New Orleans area. And here to break it all down, as always, our good and great friend Brian Alley Walsh from SportsNOLA.com, who spent the week chasing little balls down the fairways and big balls uh, down football, gridiron. Uh, hey, Brian, how are you? Ken, thank you, buddy. I want to wish the state of Louisiana a happy 200th birthday. Godspeed, 200 more. Let's well, go did, for a lot. Did you cover that original 200? I was. I signed the original <laughs> document. He was part of the Louisiana Purchase, no less. Can't uh, you tell by the beard? The other side. <laughs> he, was <laughs> he was the player to be named <laughs> later. <laughs> person to be named later. The guy that was never a player to be named later, but was was always on top out of Alcorn State. Torrin Small, former New Orleans Saints wide receiver. Good evening. It's always hey, a pleasure. How are we doing, Ken? How are we doing, family? How's right. everyone? Hey, I didn't get the call. I thought I was going to get another call. I've been the first player to get two calls. I was looking for it, but uh, it was great to see what happened this weekend. It was indeed, <laughs> and it's always a pleasure to welcome back good and great friend Mike Dettelier. SaintsReport.com, WWL Radio, Mike Dettelier.com does a tremendous job analyzing the NFL. Mike, it's good to have you with my us again. My pleasure, my pleasure. I didn't get picked either, but <laughs> I did a lot of picking. A lot of it was wrong, but I did a lot of picking. <laughs> and we're going to get into the draft extensively, but Mike, it's truly amazing how much interest has been drawn to NFL draft days. You started doing your publication how long ago now? 27 years. And when you started doing that, the interest was it was decent. It was lukewarm, uh -huh. but now it's the second most single covered event in pro sports behind the Super Bowl. Because basically, it's 52 weeks out of the year. Yeah. Brian, you understand? Yeah. Yes. I mean, 365, everybody wants draft information. Already, I got people, give me the list for next year. Tell me who's going to be the top quarterbacks, receivers. So, I mean, it has started, and my evaluation has already started on those top players. So, you can see where the interest is unbelievable. I also got to say, ESPN pushed this to another level when Absolutely. they started putting yes. it on television. Yeah. No, no question. Yes. And NFL Network has followed suit. Right. And now the unbelievable coverage that it receives is really equivalent to the interest that people have in what has become an incredible event. Three days now it spans. And of course, we'll get into it in depth. We'll tell you all about the Saints draft, get Mike's analysis of those picks. Also, winners and losers and what he thought about what transpired this past weekend. Golf and more as we continue with Sports Noah TV from TGI Fridays, 3330 Veterans Boulevard, corner of North Holland in Metairie on WHNO Channel 20. If the Saints have not improved their defense, it's not for a lack of effort through the NFL draft. They have attempted to upgrade it every year now for five consecutive years through the NFL draft with their first selection overall. Ken Trahan, Sports Noah TV from TGI Fridays. And it's a very good point because as we get into our segment about the draft, Mike, very quickly about those names we just saw. I would suggest that the jury's out on every one of those guys. Malcolm yeah. Jenkins is not what you hoped he would be at this stage. Patrick Robinson made progress last year, but you're not sure yet. Cameron Jordan, I like nice what for I first saw year. I, I think like he'll I be saw. pretty good. Yes. I really do. But you go down that list, and Cedric Ellis, I, Major I, I thought he took a step back. Major disappointment. Ken, as much as people make a big thing about quarterback misses, and that is 50-50 in first round, they have more misses, and Brian, you, can, you understand this too. More misses on defensive linemen than any other position yes. in the draft class. I agree. You, you look across the board, Torrance, you've seen it too. Defensive ends, defensive tackles. If they got eight selected in round one, you're lucky to hit on two of the eight, much less four of the eight. It goes to show you every year though there's a run. There was a run this year. Nine defensive linemen come off the board. Everybody's looking for the pass rushers. Where they're at, they're playing college basketball, they're playing tight end. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, that, that's, right. that's what's happened. This it, game has totally changed 
from a defensive-oriented game to an mm-hmm. offensive-oriented And in game. last week's show, we even touched on some of these notables over the years, from Joe Campbell to Jonathan Sullivan to Sean Knight. And if you want to put Ellis in that category, I don't think that's fair, but certainly he's not been what you hoped he would be just yet. Now, the Saints did not have a first-round pick, as you know, in the NFL draft. Did not have a second-round pick, thanks to Roger Goodell as well. So their first pick was in the third round, and they went for a very familiar name. If you if you had forgotten about him, you were reminded about him, LSU fan, Akeem Hicks, Regina, up in Canada. And an interesting player who drew some very nice comments from not only his coach, but from some others that were involved with him. Michael Brockers raving about him in Pro Football Weekly. And Mike, obviously, we'll start with you because we want to get your take on this selection of Akeem Hicks. The Saints really liked it. Yeah, people have labeled him a small college player. He played at a small college. This was a guy, when he came out of junior college, he told us Friday night, I had every Pac-10 school off of me, but SC, I selected LSU over Tennessee and Oregon. That tells me, man, when, when that's your selection, you got to, you're not a small college player. Big man who can run the field, he's just not a refined product yet. You can see he's going to need some work. Bill Johnson's going to have a big, big opportunity here to basically go after him and to develop him as a player because you know what? They could really use a guy that can really, really push the inside pocket. Mike, I agree totally. And, you know, no one knows this better than you. Is People argue that he's a reach. There's a, there's a side of people that says that he's got a lot of upside, a lot of potential. My argument is this, is that this is the third consecutive year that the Saints have tried to fill this position or one of the two interior defensive line positions on their team. Two years ago, they, they moved up in the fourth round to take Al Woods from LSU, bust. Last year, they bring in two veteran free agents in, in uh, Rodgers and Abreu Franklin. Neither one panned out. Rodgers is now with the Giants. Franklin's out on the street right now. And now they arguably make a reach here uh, in the third round with another interior defensive lineman. You bring up a great point. It's one of these hit-miss positions in the draft. Miss. Yes. Yes. A lot more right. misses, George. Yeah. And you can speak to that through playing the game. Um, yes. Was he a hit or a miss? <laughs> he no, wasn't he a was defensive a lineman. <laughs> he was a hit for week. Well, well, he, he got, got he was a hit already. He got hit a lot is what happened. That's why he was a hit. He got hit. Yeah. Uh, Might have got hit too much. Well, my what thing were we would, talking about? No. My, <laughs> thing, my thing with Torrance is, <laughs> sorry, if, if, if he was playing today in the way the world's played football, oh, man, man you, yes. Yes. you wouldn't have no shoe money. It yes. would be boot money because you'd have to get that high shoe to put all that in But you know what? Guys, guys today, they get paid on potential. Nothing they did, not, not, no, no production at all. They haven't produced anything on the field. Most guys now get paid off, off potential, what we think they can do, what they might Well, those do. numbers and are being reduced because of the rookie cap, yeah. okay? Yes, so yes, they're kind yes, of... Yes, yes, you're right. Very much so. You're right. Right. The way the new yeah. CBA exactly. is, you can make exactly. it up on production. Yeah. And, and with the rookie great. pool the Which way is it is, right more people drafting for need rather than drafting top player on the board this year. As well, at least that's the perception of many. Now, Nick Toon was the next selection for the Saints. He came in the fourth oh, round. Oh, I Here, like that. Here's a familiar name, and I thought that was a very good oh, pick, Mike. That's a value pick, a big possession type receiver, a guy that can post up downfield. And what I liked about him is of those 171 catches he made, 103 of them were third down conversion, first down plays, or in the red zone. So that meant basically you're talking about three quarters or almost three quarters of your plays, you were moving the chains. Mm-hmm. And that is, to me is big. Also the pedigree, he knows how to run routes. And, and he's not gonna be intimidated by the NFL. He's been around it, around his dad. He knows the game really well. And last year really what was the first time he really played with a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Russell Wilson came in there. Man, can you imagine North Carolina State telling him to get to step in? And he goes to Wisconsin, it wouldn't have been for two freak, really freak plays. They yeah. playing possibly for a chance to in the national championship. Yeah. I, I, now, now I, I like LT. Uh, believe me, I like. Is he the right for this team right now? I think he's a possession receiver. I think he's another Marcus Coaster. I think he's a um, Moore. I think he's a Graham. We have that. I think we need more speed. I don't think he can stretch the field the way we, what we need right now. We lost Meacham. Meacham was a 4-3 sprinter. He got down the field. Henderson is kind of uh, getting up in, in age. We need somebody to stretch the field. I, I like going at a receiver, but I like going at a receiver with more speed. You know, this, you know, T, you bring up some very good points. 
They said the same thing about Jerry Rice. He can't, he doesn't have the NFL breakaway speed. What did Jerry Rice do? I mean, no, 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 we got to move on. They do stretch the field All right. with speed. Corey Devin White. Henderson and Meacham stretch the field. Corey White, the defensive back out of Sanford. Uh, their next pick, Mike. And again, this guy, competition, I'm not sure, but that physical ability, I like it. Athlete, played cornerback. In fact, I watched film of him for a school when he was coming out of high school. He was a college quarterback, running back, wide receiver. First thing I told him after he got picked is, one thing I do know, you can catch the ball. Yep. And some of these defensive backs on the Saints really got troubles with that. Very physical player. I had him ranked as a strong safety. Now, they're going to try him as a press cover cornerback. Uh -huh. We'll see how that works out. But he's a good special teams performer. Well, they can use the safety as well. Andrew Tiller out of Syracuse. This was an obvious a lead Doug in check from Doug Marone, which can't be bad, right? Yeah. In fact, uh, I listed him in my book as 338. And he said, man, Mike. Man, you shot me 10 pounds, man. I'm 328. <laughs> you know, he was mad about that. This is a guy that has some weight issues. If he can keep his weight under control, big wide body, real good run blocker, improved as a pass blocker. But remember, why this team really took off was because they could run the ball effectively. Mm -hmm. The last two picks showed why they want to continue to do it. No question, because Marcel mm -hmm. Jones is the final pick, the seventh round draft pick, Jones out of Nebraska. And when you look at him, he's, he's a huge guy. He's just not very strong, Mike. Well, he's got an 83 and a half inch wingspan. Now, anybody who lifts weights knows one thing. To get that bar up that much with an 83 and a half inch wingspan, man, you, you got some long arms. He's had a back issue. He's a right tackle, real sturdy guy as a run blocker. Again, needs some work in the pass protection part of the game. But I graded him out higher than Tiller. If he's healthy, he's a guy that I think eventually could be a starting right tackle for you. Brian, it looked like they picked the best players available. Yeah, you know, and a quick word about uh, Tiller is that I remember Jim Fink saying that if you've got weight issues, that's one thing it's hard to get rid of, okay, when you enter the NFL. And then secondly, yeah, all these guys, the late ones, Mike, mm -hmm. T, these guys are, are need picks, guys that you hope will pan out. Yeah. They're going to have a hard time making this roster. No, I, yeah. well, you know why yeah. they got picked? Number nine. You want to protect yeah. Yeah. him at all costs. He isn't getting any younger. And secondly, you're going to have to run the ball more. <laughs> they right. so, they might have right. been, right. been, 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 been there to please Sean Payton. Those there you guys. go. <laughs> we we have to take a break. We'll get Torrance's take when we yes. resume in just a moment. Plus, we'll take a look at LSU players pick, top 10 players in the draft pick, and much more as Sports NOLA TV continues from TGI Fridays in Metairie. Our Sports NOLA TV trivia question of the evening. The Saints continue a trend of finding draft choices from lower division schools. Which of these schools has not produced a Saints draft pick since 2000? Cal Davis, Wingate, Hofstra, or Mountain Union? Obscure, but three of the four have. The other has not. Figure it out, and we'll give you the answer a little bit later in the show. Sports NOLA TV, TGI Fridays, Metairie. Ken Trahan with you, and the NFL draft, of course, by the boards. And as you looked at the top of the draft, we all knew what was going to happen with the first two picks. Mike, they went as scheduled. Then, for lack of a better description, all heck broke loose, and things really changed. It was blink, 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 <laughs> blink, blink. Somebody's going to pick him. The Browns go up to pick Trent Richardson. Who I think is, he's the best all-purpose back I've seen hit this league since Adrian Peterson. I think he's the best player in the draft, yeah, personally. Uh, Matt, Matt Khalil, a uh, big offensive tackle. When you spend that kind of money on a quarterback like they did last year, you got to protect him. Justin Blackman, I really like. Big red zone, conversion type guy. Morris Claiborne. Uh, I think he's a better cover cornerback today than Patrick Peterson was a year ago. The guy I really like, Mark Barron. I hate to see him go to Tampa. We've got to play this sucker twice a year. I think he is an Ed Reed type guy at the safety spot. Biggest reach in the draft, Ryan Tannehill in round one. He's a guy two years away from playing, but the Dolphins are in desperate need of a quarterback. Luke Keekley, 
Really good inside linebacker, tackling machine, over 500 tackles in three seasons, going to the Panthers. And Stephon Gilmore, good looking cover cornerback, nice kid, gives up way too many plays in the third and fourth quarter. I think that's a, that's a bit of a stretch with the 10th overall pick. Andrew Luck, the top overall pick. Here he is. Best no quarterback, surprise. Best quarterback I've graded in 27 years. Out does Peyton Manning, Troy Aikman. And if you can protect him and put a little talent around him, man, you win at Stanford. Just think about that. Kobe Fleener was the only skilled player drafted off that team. And look what he's done the last two years. I, I guarantee you, RG3 had more talent around him on that offensive team than what uh, Locke did. And speaking of RG3, born in New Orleans. He's the seventh best quarterback I've ever graded in 27 years. So while Luck finishes one, he finishes seventh. Different style quarterback, but both can throw accurately from the pocket. And if you pressure, he's going to take off and run, and he's got world-class speed. Something to be said about that hug. I think we call it a Judas kiss. I don't know. Where the way Goodell's dealing with players. If you yeah. do something wrong, I'm going to find you. That's exactly what he's telling you. And then, of course, there's Morris Claiborne of LSU, and Mo Claiborne is, well, he's just a player. He's really good, and I thought that was a big surprise if Dallas stepped up to get him. Yeah, that really shocked me. I hadn't heard that, but uh, I know the family likes it other than the mother because she's a closet Saints fan. She don't want to admit it in Shreveport, but she's a big Saints fan, but, you know, she got a got a twirl of leading. So you can just see his ball skills, his ability to find the football quickly in flight. Mm. And he plays the ball towards almost like, like a receiver, receiver. would does. Yes. And I mean, yes. you can't teach that. <clears throat> this guy was a former cornerback yeah. wide receiver, three years at cornerback, those reverse skills, and just that ability yeah. to do something after that he makes the, the interception. Guy, the, guy, the, guy, the guy has great ball skills, you know, great ball awareness. One thing that he does, if that ball is anywhere close, he's playing the ball and not the receiver. And that's what makes him special. I hear questions about his tackling, and yet I've watched him play what? on a regular he basis. Looks, he looks, oh, I, I, he looks all, weekend, all weekend <laughs> long I heard that from national analysts, yeah, and I'm like, is, we watch them play every game. How can you make that assessment when LSU's on TV every week? Exactly. <laughs> and they got guys on ESPN. <laughs> exactly. I was scratching my head. What, what, like, I, 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 like, like, what are they talking can about? Can this guy, will they try him to return, to return in, in the big If I would, it would be on a kickoff. Now, he can't return punts like Patrick. I mean, Patrick was a guy for a big man I've never seen anybody that big that could return mm. punts like what he can. Yeah. He tied Devin Hester's record in his rookie season. It's unbelievable, but I, I give him a shot as a kickoff yeah. guy. Brian, any surprises to you in that top 10? Anything that really caught you? Well, the Tannehill, but I think we were all kind of prepared that Miami player. would step yeah. up and take yeah. him. Uh, you're not really. I, I, well, I will say this. I thought it was really a bold move for Dallas to step up and take Claiborne mm -hmm. and go from 14 to 6, correct? What about you know? the Vikings versus the Browns and uh, what they did? Well, you know what? Uh, the, they they, they, uh, they, Cleveland, they did. The Cleveland gave up three third round picks to move into that spot, and the people are saying that. They weren't going to go that route anyway. So, mm -hmm. you know, I thought yeah. well, if, well, if I'm Tampa today, I'm saying I never had interest in Richardson. Right. Y'all gave up my right. exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly. Exactly yeah. what they say. Even if I did yeah. have interest, I wasn't going to tell you. Make, Let them you make, make them go through it. And maybe Tampa didn't want Morris Claiborne. Well, that's what based on yeah. what we saw. I mean, that's I a guess, possibility. I can't believe that, though. No. I really can't. Uh, I, I don't think, believe I, that. I, you know, because you think the who they have to Ron face in this is the defensive back coach. You got to look at the division. You got to look at the division. Yeah, absolutely. He, he, he was going to be perfect for Tampa in his division. Well, if you look at the NFC South, Mike, it appeared to me that people were clearly planning the Saints, game planning. Well, they were playing Saints-Atlanta. Uh -huh. Because, in essence, what Atlanta's got at wide receiver with Julio Jones, Ronnie Roddy White. White, Tony Gonzalez, and Harry Douglas is every bit as explosive as what the Saints have. So it's but a division. You're missing a quarterback. You're missing a quarterback. You're missing a quarterback. You're missing a quarterback. Exactly. Big, 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 big difference. difference. Atlanta, but you've got to play four, big, yeah. if you tamper, big four games against those guys. Yeah, absolutely. And Atlanta goes to get a Sandy Samuel before the draft. Correct. So you don't you think that was, uh, yeah, exactly. that was directed toward exactly. Drew Brees and his plethora yes. of wide receivers. Everybody's trying hunting. to catch up. Everybody's, Everybody's trying to catch up. But what's strange is Atlanta has really done nothing this offseason yeah. other than the Sante no. no, you're right. Have, I like what Tampa Bay and Carolina did. I didn't particularly like, 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 like what Atlanta did. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I like what Atlanta did. Oh, he <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> what would you, you right expect? That? Oh, oh, he's got to have a opinion. You got it now. You heard that pop fly go over his head. He was trying to reach for it. A lot of Louisiana flavor in this draft. Of course, we mentioned. Morris Claiborne, but there were quite a few Louisiana players that were selected in the draft. Let's take a look. Michael Brockers in round one to the Rams. Reuben Randall late in round two, the end of round two to the Giants. You know, play with Eli Manning. Brandon Taylor, 
Went in round three out of Franklin in high school to the Chargers. Ron Brooks to the Bills in the fourth round. The five LSU players have got picked off in the draft, but you had ULL make contributions as well with a couple of players that were chosen. Mike, a pretty good representation of Louisiana in the draft as we look at a Dwight yeah, Bentley we'll, of ULL yeah, with Darius we'll Green Bentley, that's a good in pick round up. four, and then Jeremy Lane out of Northwestern Bill State. Bill Bentley going to Detroit. That's a great fit. And Darius Green going to a team that knows how to use the tight end. That's a great fit. Just think about LSU, though. Five players picked, and today, as we're talking, seven guys signed free agent contracts, and Jordan Jefferson would be the eighth. They're giving him a tryout. Yeah. That's unbelievable. This is one of the smallest senior classes LSU has. You wait till football tsunami hits next year. We're not going to have enough time to go through all those LSU players. I got a question with the, regarding Green. Was the fourth round a little bit lower than what you thought? Yeah, I thought he'd be a third round. I, I, did, I thought uh, he'd be. There was a run on defensive linemen and cornerbacks that kind of pushed him back. And then you saw a little bit of a run on receivers. Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. understand that sometimes, like with Ruben. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it just fell. Ruben, Ruben didn't win the Powerball, but he won the lottery. Look who he that's goes a to. Good, that's a good he team goes to the to Giants, go to, a great organization. And he'll have a chance Manning. to play there. He will. Yes. Mario Manningham leaves. The spot's open Correct. for him. And he's got Corey Webster there, possibility of Chad Jones, Michael Clayton. So there's a lot of LSU connections there, but there's a spot and Eli. And you never soon. see double coverage again in your life he'll with him, with Knicks and Cruz on either side of you. <laughs> and you know playing, about that. He'll, he'll be playing this year. Torrance, just another <laughs> illustration. LSU is so good mm -hmm. everywhere else but at quarterback. 13-0, yes. and 0, and they have two <laughs> quarterbacks that are undrafted. Just tells you about this football team and how they had a glaring need and a glaring lack of talent at one position. Yes. If they can clear up the quarterback situation, hey, they'll be holding that crystal ball a lot more. Hopefully they clear that up this year. But to George Jefferson they won't with Tampa, it. hopefully he'll get, get moved to tight else. end. If I was him, I'd ask him, let me try tight end. I, agree. I have an opportunity to uh, make a team. I have a very good point. Uh, uh, flex tight end, I think. And, you know, he got mad at me because I said he couldn't accurately throw the football downfield. Apparently you weren't the only one that too. felt that way. Yeah, right. I, 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 I think, think everybody yes. felt the exact same way. Yes. Put on a little bit of weight. I, he's a good enough Perfect. athlete. He could be that flex tight end exactly. in this business. Exactly. Just doesn't get it at this point in time that in the NFL, if you can't accurately throw the football in college, yeah. what are you going to do when you hit the next level? Exactly. Right. But, but tight end is perfect for him. He has I the agree. perfect size. Uh, I think it's good. Like you say, put a pick up a little weight, um, go out and, and run some rounds. You already know offenses, so I think it'd be great. Desmond Moses of Tulane signs as a free agent with Green Bay. Their only contribution, they've had players in recent years that have uh, been part of the NFL draft, like Matt Forte and Troy Kropog. But Brian, they have to step it up a little bit, and maybe they will now under Curtis Johnson. Yeah, you know, but I don't think we, any of us expected any no. draft picks out of there. Another surprise: uh, Green Bay's all their picks were defense. You know, all the all the picks you were play? Yeah. 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 Play. I tell you, absolutely. Hey, hey listen, take that, 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 the best sure. player available. Understand yeah. your need and move on. Yeah. When we move on in just a moment, we'll get to our hot seat about grading drafts and how ridiculous that process is. Also, we'll check in with a marvelous one as we continue with Sports Noah TV from TGI Fridays. Our Sports NOLA TV trivia question this evening. The Saints continue to trend of finding draft choices from lower division schools. Which of these schools has not produced a Saints draft pick since 2000? Answer is Mount Union. Well, you see the UC Davis players. Remember the training camp phenom, Mona May Ojo. JT O'Sullivan, the quarterback. David Jones on a win gate. Of course, Marcus Colson. Mount Union has not produced one. But stay tuned. Maybe they will in years to come. Stay tuned next year. And Trey Hand Sports Noah TV from TGI Fridays in Metairie. It is time now for our hot seat segment where we put Brian Alley Walsh on the hot seat with a topic of great interest. And that topic is grading NFL drafts. Everyone demands it. Everyone wants an opinion, whether you have one or not. For the life of me, I have no idea why, since there's no way you're going to know for quite some time. But that said, that's our hot seat question. Should you grade NFL drafts? Why or why not? Brian, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Trahan. Well, I'm kind of mixed on this, uh, but, but the argument is simple, is that there is a tremendous demand. People want to know. If you go on the internet today, on, on every major sports website, there is nothing but, but uh, post-draft grades. All 32 teams, 
like it or not, this is what people want to read. And as Mike so eloquently said earlier in the show, is that it, it is the second most coveted sporting event outside of the Super Bowl. People want to know what others think about their team. This is the one time of the year where everybody starts at ground zero. Uh, everybody has a chance to get better, and they do it through the draft. So you, whether you like it or not, it's not going to go away, and people want it. You can't play both sides of the issue. You can't say it's not important and say the draft's overhyped. And, and listen, to a certain degree, I agree with that. The draft is overhyped, but you can't say that and then say the importance of it is if you don't draft well, you don't win. So you, you got to take it, look at it this way. You're trying to take money out of my pocket about these grades. So, so I'm going to disagree with you on that. I don't like to do it, but that's what everybody wants. So you got to feed the public what they're looking at at feed this point. Feed the monster. Yeah, but the, the grade on potential. That's all, that's all it is, because we don't know. Again, you won't know until a couple of years of what these guys can do and what they can't do. Some of you will know a lot early, but it's all of potential. Not only that, you got to look at, uh, when you're talking about grading some people on the draft, what about the previous draft? Some picks that you gave up that you're not allowed to get a pick this year. That should count. Does that count? It, it yes. Does. That should, that what, should count. What Ingram, counts toward this draft plan. Exactly. Line. Greg so, Romeus had a red shirt season. Basically, you didn't know he was an incomplete, so you got to put him toward this draft. Johnny Patrick, Johnny Patrick, Nate Johnny saw a little bit of play. Same yeah. thing. You know, uh, look at the uh, the high school recruiting, the the college signing. It's the same thing. Exactly. Yes. Colleges are rated on their uh, recruiting immediately. Yes. Immediately. So even look, before in this region, particularly the uh, college signing date and 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 uh, National Football League uh, uh, draft are two of the most important times of the year in the off season. Well, well, well we, owe, we owe it all to, we owe it all to technology. Everybody wants to know, everybody can keep up with sports at all times with the, the new smartphones and the new iPads and all these other gadgets that they have. And everybody want to know. Everybody are a big football. Football is so huge with fantasy football and all, and they need to know who they're going to pick up. They have these seasons going on. They have money in the pots. Don't let uh, Roger Goodell know that, but they have money in the pot, and these guys, it's big money, it's big, and the fans love it. He's, he's driving a Lexus because of the interest, so keep yeah, it coming. Right. Yeah, right. And the other thing about it is, too, what the NFL will never admit to you, is that gambling and fantasy football put this league at another oh, level. Yes. And exactly. people that you would have never thought would be involved in fantasy football keep up with the draft because exactly. they want to pick those players. And gambling, it used to be, you know, you maybe had to do it a certain way. Today, you can get on the internet yeah. and do it. It's, it's I, easy I, I, today. I'm a consultant. I, have, I get many calls. I'm a consultant. I'm a, I get many calls of who I should pick, who I shouldn't pick. Am I right all the time? No, people do go down. People do get hurt. But hey, that's part of the game. That's what makes the NFL right now the number one sports in, um, in the USA. A piece of advice for everybody. <laughs> read the internet, read Mike, read our new consultant here. I didn't know that. <laughs> and then do this. Print, out, print it out and ball it up and throw it away. <laughs> Come back three years, four years from now, right, Mike? Really? Yeah, I mean. Uh, and, and then we'll, we'll evaluate it. But you don't have to go that long. No. Yes. Two years. After but two years time, until then, Hey, live with it. It's, it's what it's it is. It's microwave. It's microwave leaves exactly. right now. Yeah. yeah, guys, you don't have many years to, to prove yourself. You have, a, like you say, two years. And depending on where you get drafted at, hey, you might not you have, have that. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't disagree with anything that's been said. In fact, I would say that grading players at this stage is a little bit ridiculous. The only thing I would say is that the grades on the professional level done by people like Mike and by people that analyze the pro game, in particular scouts, is a lot more dependable than what you see at the college level in grading high school players. Because frequently, with all the services that analyze high school players, the tail wags the dog. A player that was, I don't know, say one star or two stars or whatever grading system you want to put on him, all of a sudden becomes a three or four star player because Alabama or LSU signed him. Come on. It's ridiculous. It's the tail wagging the dog. They don't really know that much. All they see is what they hear from people and maybe some grainy video of a guy for two or three plays on YouTube. Come on. With the pro game, it's a lot different. They got video everywhere. They've done every ounce of evaluating imaginable. So the guys at the NFL level have a better grasp of this. And yet, for all of that technology, for all of what they're able to do, they miss very frequently. We detailed some of the Saints guys that were misses over a period of time, including the current regime, which has done a very good job 
and there's no doubt that they will continue to miss at times. You just hope that they hit more times than others. Grading players, I think it's ridiculous. I think it's hilarious, at least at this stage. But as has been brought out, it is an essential element of doing what we all do for a living. Mike, with doing what he does, obviously on a regular basis, and ourselves as being members of the media, people want our opinions so that they can point out to us how stupid we were about a year or two from now. Somehow they never remember when we were we right. Were smart. Exactly. We were smart. They never and you that. get killed, but they never give you credit, do they? No, no, no. Never, yep. never. Same thing is, I picked fantasy football for many years. People have called me up, give me picks, give me picks. Yeah. Yes. You never hear the ones Here that really turn uh, out no, well. No. Every once in a while, I'm like, oh, thank you so much. And man, when you miss on one, man, I remember when you gave me this guy in round three. You, he MSL. was hell suckle all That's year it. long for me. All right, it's time now for our marvelous minute where we inspire you on a weekly basis. Marvelous Marvin LeBlanc. Go to marvinleblanc.com slash TV to get your inspiration for the day, some daily life's lessons, some inspiring notes about how you can live your life in better fashion, and somehow he always manages to work in a sports analogy to his positive way of thinking, which I am sure he will do again here this evening. With that, here's our friend, Marvin LeBlanc. Good afternoon, sports fan. I am Marvin LeBlanc, and welcome, small business leaders, because you right now in this economy are critical to the success of America. Last week, we covered the first surprise of change, which came from an idea out of a book. Hello, I read a book. Are you reading a book? Are you studying? Don't just spend all your time on Facebook. Get something in that head. That first surprise of change is that sports NOLA TV, is that right? Sports NOLA TV? Yes, go there and you'll see last week's YouTube. Today is the second surprise of change, Mike. And what is that? What looks like laziness is often exhaustion. Yes, a lot of times your employees look like they're resisting. It's not that they're just being lazy. They're just freaking tired, Mike. And one of the things kind of that you mentioned earlier with Jordan Jefferson is they might be a little out of position. Meaning, you know what? Maybe your talents and skills in the workplace should be channeled in a different area. Maybe you need to make that change. And as a small business leader, you also need to recognize that your team members need to make that change. Now, the other responsibility we have is we have to engage the hearts and minds of those team members. Because as you know, the mind can't stop what the heart wants. That's a very important quote. The mind cannot stop what the heart wants. And if you need more talk about performance, it's time to go and get either a CD called Come Hell or High Sales for those individuals that need to perform. And then for the adversity book, which went number one Amazon, Come Hell or High Water, Life Lessons from Hurricane Katrina. Back to you, Ken. What a job, Marvin. Outstanding. That's marvelous Marvin LeBlanc. You He's marvelous. Tell, you can tell this dude's from the bottom. He's good. We'll, we got some body water rolling through them veins, I guarantee you. Bobby we will try to be marvelous to in the same vein as Marvin when we continue in just a moment to take a look at the Hornets, college baseball, and much more as Sports Nola TV continues from TGI Fridays in Metairie. In here, it's always Friday. That's TGI Fridays at 3330 Veterans Boulevard in Menory. Come see our good friend Ronnie Bouvier, who welcomes us regularly and takes care of us. Great food, great fellowship, great location here on Veterans 887-7788. The number to call for TGI Fridays. We hope you will. Ken Trahan, Sports NOLA TV, the New Orleans Hornets saw their season come to an end at the end of the regular season. Played well down the stretch and maybe cost themselves a higher pick in the process, and they lose a coin flip with Cleveland for that third spot overall in terms of balls and the hoppers. So, unfortunately, they'll have one less than the Cavs will have. So, let's take a look at the Hornets' final results of the year. They beat Golden State on the road 83-81. That hurt them in terms of a pick. Then they went on the road and lost. And Houston to close the year 84-77. Scores that you might expect from the Hornets this year. Lower scoring, kept themselves competitive throughout the year, weren't able to keep an even flow with injuries that they had throughout the course of the season. Now they must evaluate who they're going to keep and who they will not keep. As far as the NBA draft is concerned, the Hornets, well, there you go. Right behind Cleveland, the combinations, they got one less ball on the hopper than the Cavaliers. 
And just ahead of Sacramento. So the fourth overall opportunity to get that first overall pick. Keep in mind they get a lottery pick from the Minnesota Timberwolves as well. So a couple of lottery picks which will give them a chance to get better instantly as they move forward. Now the major decisions to be made about player personnel and who's going to return next year. Clearly they have some guys that will be back. Some others in a gray area. Some that absolutely will not be back next year. And the Hornets, of course, have those decisions to make. And obviously, they have new ownership, and hopefully they'll have more money to spend as a result of clearing some cap space and with an aggressive new owner who clearly wants to win. Speaking of winning, the Zurich Classic, well, that was a winner in New Orleans. Great attendance, beautiful weather, and a heck of a tournament with a good field and quite a finish. It came down to the very end, and it was down to two men. Ernie Els, the World Golf Hall of Famer, 18-time PGA Tour winner, but a guy trying to get back in the PGA Championship and the Masters comes up short on 18 with that putt in regulation. Jason Duffner for the win, and he slides it to the high side. So we're going to continue on with a playoff. Draw the straws. Ernie draws first, and he gets to tee off first as a result of what he draws. And here on the green again on 18, deja vu. He's going to slide it just to the right, does Els, and that gives Duffner, who would had a very good approach shot to the green and then a good leg putt. This little one and a half footer for the win. He gets it. The 35 year old Jason Duffner wins the Zurich Classic of New Orleans. His first tour win ever. He's had a very good year and he'll have a better year because he's going to use this money to pay for his marriage because he's getting married to Amanda Boyd this coming week. Duffner wins it in a playoff with Els. Luke Donald ascends to number one in the world over Rory McElroy by finishing third outright. Graham Dillette finishing in a tie with Ryan Palmer, that's Sean Payton's buddy, whom he followed all week long. Steve Stricker just couldn't make a putt. One of the best in the world at world number seven, finishing right behind Palmer and Dillette. Very good event, Steve Worthy's done an outstanding job. Brian, you covered the event along with me. You had to be impressed. Absolutely, like you said, great crowds, great field. Look at that leaderboard. Uh, Luke Donald moved into the number one world ranking with that third place finish, so uh, you know what, with Steve Worthy on board, Kenny, this field is only going to get better and better. Quite a weekend, Mike. NFL draft, Zurich Classic, State Softball Championships, Jazz Fest, my goodness. <laughs> Listen, you couldn't be in a better spot. It's like Marv Levy would always say, where else would you want to be is right here, right now. Unbelievable <laughs> yeah, 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 weekend, Torrance. It's a shame they, they run into each other with these yeah. events. Oh, uh, yeah, but, but it's, it's great for the city. Um, we've been taking a black eye lately. And to have this right now, this weekend, I think it was great for the city. It was a great opportunity for us to uh, rebound. College baseball, it was a good but not great weekend for both LSU and Tulane. The Tigers at home against Georgia, and they win two out of three, lose the Sunday game, left the bases loaded in the bottom of the ninth, and the Tigers still tied for first in the SEC at 14-7, and 35-10 overall. They get Tulane in their second matchup at the box. Tuesday night. Then it's on to Oxford. Big weekend series at Ole Miss. They're all big in the SEC. Tigers playing for a host position in both a regional and super regional round at this point. As for Tulane, they went to East Carolina, one, two of three. Like LSU couldn't finish it on Sunday, and they really need to. They get LSU on Tuesday, as mentioned. Then it's Southern Miss, their traditional rival, coming to Turchin Stadium this weekend for a three-game Said bottom line, LSU's playing for hosting a super regional two lanes, playing for their lives. They're going to have to win their conference tournament, it appears, to get into the NCAA baseball tournament. High school baseball and the 5A pairings have been announced for the state playoffs. Of course, the 4A, 3A, 2A, 1A, Class B, and C playoffs already underway, but the 5A pairings have been announced. Let's take a look at the 5A pairings in high school baseball which have now been released by the LHSAA with a number of local teams that are in the event. And we take a look, Jesuit, the defending state champion, is the fifth seed, and they get a local opponent in North Shore, state champion back in 2009. Fountain Blue is in there against Walker. Fountain Blue is a good team. Brother Martin and Como, Rummel and Central Lafouche. Uh -huh. Of interest to Mike Petouille, huh? St. Paul's. And Captain Shreve Hanville is playing very good. Baseball Covington's a good team. Destrahan, a traditional power. John Errett. A good team. They got a tough draw, though, and Mandeville has a very tough draw. And Zachary that is allowed back into the playoffs. A lot of teams in in 4A still in the regional round and beyond. Salmon, Bell Chase, Holy Cross, Lutcher, and Shaw. In 3A, LaRanger, E.D. White, and St. Charles Catholic still alive. In 2A, North Lake, Christian, John Curtis, Riverside, Springfield, St. Thomas, Aquinas, Newman, and French Settlement still alive. In 1A, Country Day, and Hannon are still involved. And in Class C, Grand Isle is still involved. 
Brian, you coach high school baseball. No surprise, we have so many local teams still playing in the playoffs. No, I'll tell you what, it, uh, to, to look at all those local teams, there's such good baseball around here. And look for look for a couple of these teams to be in at Turchin Stadium later this month. Yeah. What about Central Lafourche? They're changing, changed ADs, changed football coach, but baseball, Baseball's Coach DePlantis really, does a good job. really been solid across the board, and they got a really good baseball team this year. I don't know how far they'll go with it because I know one thing, those New Orleans teams are pretty tough. And, uh, but, uh, and listen, they'll hang in there. You've done a nice job. All I can say is you look at on the E.D. White, some of those teams on the river, they've been really, really good at baseball also. Well, a very special athletic season for John Curtis Christian. They won football in 2A. Uh, they won softball in 2A. They won basketball, both boys and girls in 2A. They won indoor track. They still got outdoor track, and they're the five seed in the baseball 2A playoffs. This is a remarkable year for John Curtis. Hey, hey, JT is doing a, a great job over there with the kids, and uh, and it's showing. It's showing on the field. They, they play with great discipline. Well, that's one thing that school plays with. Play with great discipline. You find a team that plays with discipline, you're going to find a winning ball club. And in the state softball championships, congratulations to Archbishop Hannon, which won a second consecutive 1A state championship. And I mentioned John Curtis. All they did was go 31-0, and they beat Evangel. Who else for the 2A championship? Brian, I know you're close to the sport. Uh, those are remarkable accomplishments. The state tournament in sulfur and softball is a great event. Absolutely, and, and you're right. If, if uh, the state of Louisiana was to offer these all-sport championships, Curtis would win it outright, probably. <laughs> oh, yeah, no question. They really would, and yeah. and speaking of the Hornets, just briefly on them, Torrance, they got a lot of decisions to make. Chris Kamen, yes or no? Probably no, but I'd try to take a flyer on him. I might go Okafor on Amnesty him and get him out of here. Yeah. And then, of course, Carl Landry, you got a decision to make here. They never should have traded Marcus Thornton for him in the first place. What about the Hornets moving well, forward? Well, uh, the one thing, we, we got some stability in the owner right now. And I think uh, you have to evaluate the team and see what we get in these lottery picks. And then we make some decisions from there. Uh, I think we could use, probably use one of the lottery picks as, as some trade. Or we could probably use some of these players that are, are still producing as some trade. The feeling is so different regarding the Hornets from four months ago, isn't it? Uh, with the lockout and everything, with, the, with the, uh, the strife, labor strife and everything. And now there is that stability that you talk about, T. Yeah. They've owned two lottery picks. They've got strong ownership. I think the GM and the coach are solid guys. I mean, I think there's a lot of upside to this offseason and, and next NBA season. I, I'd use that earliest lottery pick on the best player I can get, especially a big man if I can get yes, my hands yes, on yes, Absolutely. Yes. But on that second pick, if I could get me a proven veteran player, a mm -hmm. guy that can come in That's here, right. yes. score points for me, play good defense, I would maybe try to maneuver around that. One thing with Dale, he's done a nice job kind of mixing and matching this roster. Now he's got some money that he can maybe use to get in better players. Uh, I think they're on the upside. Well, this team yes. cannot score. They need Gordon exactly. healthy and they exactly. need to keep him and exactly. they need somebody else that can score, score the basketball. They simply can't score. They defend well, rebound well, but they've got to be able to score. You're not going anywhere in the NBA if you cannot score. So that should be exhibit A in terms of anything they do beyond that first pick, which I agree with Mike, is to go after the best player available at that point, regardless of what position he plays, although you clearly need a big man with Okafor's uncertain status and ditto for Chris Kamen. Mm -hmm. We'll take a timeout. Another segment still to come from TGI Fridays on Sports NOAA TV. Glad you've joined us here on WHNO Channel 20. Don't miss our Sports NOAA TV season finale next Monday at 6 p.m. and you'll be able to check out our top 10 Sports Stories of the Year in the Greater New Orleans area. A lot to choose from and a lot of good ones. That's next Monday, 6 p.m. here on WHNO. And our sports block this week is an hour early because of the Lassie Telethon. So all of our sports shows, our sports block this week, coming at you an hour earlier here on WHNO for the Lassie Telethon. Back at 6 next week with Sports Noah TV. Ken Trahan with you. And as we look at the next week's show, just a brief preview as we get ready to close, Brian. Top 10 Sports Stories of the Year top of your head what's the top sports stories of the year in new orleans well i think there's a consensus on the panel i'm sure i mean obviously you have to look at the at the bounty scandal uh but there but there are so many other levels to the saints being the the top story uh the drew Brees contract is a major issue that still has to be played out we're still facing possible sanctions to players 
said uh, one. Huh? You know, you I, said well, one. I know, but I'm saying, but I, I have to group. It's easy one. It's, it's yeah. Uh, yeah. It's I mean, no, I mean, on. I'm just <laughs> saying that you have to say the whole Saints thing. How about LSU? And it's bid for a national championship. Just one. The unbeaten just, regular season. Just one. Ben yeah, Franklin answer. missing the playoffs. Give me that dude. One. I, I'll give you one for next year. Ramifications of Bounty Gate. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'll guarantee you that will be number one next year because this team will be covered yeah. like no other team has right. been covered locally and nationally because of what happened. In case yeah. you didn't notice, I was just eavesdropping on what yes. you were saying. Yeah. That's, what saying. Yes, right. yes. Come on, right. Get to the point. Get to the point. Sean Payton. My, Sean Payton. Yes. But, but, but my thing was the LSU. I was expecting a big game, you know, and for them to go out and come unprepared, I was very disappointed in the team, very disappointed in Les Miles, and I, I hope. They can do better next year. It was a big story because it was a national championship game and you Absolutely. had LSU playing it and they yes. had an incredible season. Yes. And it will always be tarnished by that performance, even though they had a phenomenal season and then it was still phenomenal. And we had the final four here. We had an SEC basketball tournament. Tulane hired an African-American football coach. There's so mm -hmm. many great stories and all of it gets pushed behind Bounty Gate because of the ramifications of it and what it has meant and the penalties that have come and player penalties, of course, as well. I mean, it's just been a remarkable year for sports stories. It's going to get better. We have so many other big events still to come in the New Orleans area, Mike. It's remarkable this great run we're having. Another thing, too, is Eli Manning getting out of the shadow of Big yeah. Brother. Oh, that's a good that's story. A that's a big Very good got story. out of the shadow yeah, because he that's got two one. of them he can hold yes. on to, and then Peyton trumps him about a month and a half later <laughs> when he becomes the free agent of all time to be co coveted. It's got, unbelievable. Got, Denver no. doesn't do anything to help him. I mean, yeah. come on, go get some players for Peyton. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Come on. They didn't I do agree. much to help him. I thought I they should have done a lot more. I agree with you. And by the Same way, I like, I like what several teams did in the draft, Brian. I like the Vikings. I like the Panthers. I like Green Bay. I like Tampa. Indianapolis. I like Cincinnati. Yeah, the yeah, best yeah, draft. Best draft. Yeah, like best it. draft, hands yeah, down. Yeah, Kirkpatrick, yeah. Zeitler, Pierce. Who else? Still, Charles. Yes. Um, you know, uh, Aaron, uh, another draft. reach, I think, in the first round we didn't mention yeah. or touch on it was Bruce Irvin from West oh, Virginia yeah. going to Seattle at 15. Oh. becoming famous for this now. Man. Yes. All I can tell you is. Yeah, the new yes. Raiders. Pete, <laughs> Pete Carroll wouldn't recruit some of these guys at SC. Oh my. But, it's, you know, the draft yeah. is all about value, yeah. and Bruce Irvin wasn't the 15th best player yeah. in this draft. No. Well, Mike, it's no. always a pleasure. pleasure. Great having you with us. Keep up the great man, work. SaintsReport.com. Mike, the I'm going to get to sit next to him all the time. Yeah, you're lucky. Brian, always a a pleasure, Thanks, thank Kenny. you. The baseball coach himself, Torrin yes. Small, always oh, great man. to have great, you with us, my friend. Great to be here, great to be here. All right. Want to thank you. Don't forget, next week, top 10 sports stories of the year. You won't want to miss it at 6 p.m. here on Sports NOLA TV. That's next week at 6 p.m. And until then, for the guys, I'm Ken Trahan saying thanks for joining us and be a good sport. God bless you one and all. Rounding third and heading home. So long. <laughs>